Hello, everybody, and welcome back to TYT. This is a special edition. I am David Schuster reporting live from Connecticut. We have some news involving the 2024 US presidential campaign, particularly involving Jenk Uger, presidential candidate. There is some news from New Hampshire. We will get to that in our interview with Jenk in just a moment. But first, a full disclosure to some of you who may think, wow, this is a little bit awkward. Um, yes, I have worked for Jenk and TYT for the last two years. I've been friends with Jenk for a lot longer than that, and I have publicly and privately endorsed his presidential campaign and volunteered to do anything to help his effort. Uh, however, uh, for the next 30 minutes, I'm gonna take off that hat and put on the hat of straight news journalist and ask all the tough questions, including some adversarial ones that I would ask of any candidate, including one who was in the position that Jenk is in now. So with that, let's get started and welcome Jenk Uger to the program. Jenk, thanks for joining us. Thank you, David. All right, Jenk, uh, there's news out of New Hampshire. You're getting a hearing this Thursday from the Election Ballot Law Commission. Uh, what does that mean and how significant is this to your campaign? Yes, uh, so what we've done is uh, we're filling out all the normal forms to get on ballots in different states like Nevada and New Hampshire. We've been on time, we've followed every guideline there is. And uh, so far, those two forms have had uh, some version of language of you need to be a natural born citizen. Uh, to be on the ballot. Now, uh, we believe that that is incorrect. The FEC has already ruled that you can run as a naturalized citizen. The question is left up to the Supreme Court as to whether you could serve as a naturalized citizen. And we're going to make the argument to the Ballot Law Commission in New Hampshire that they should not make this decision. The courts should. And we have an excellent legal argument for that that we're going to unveil at that hearing on Thursday, 10 a.m. in New Hampshire. And I'm, you know, from my perspective, I would love as many uh, people who are interested in this campaign to show up there in, in Concord uh, at, this, uh, at the Ballot Law Commission hearing um, uh, as they can. Um, at 9.15 a.m. is when we're gonna gather, and then at 10 a.m. is the hearing. And, uh, and we're going to argue to get me on the ballot. And if we win that case, I would be the first nationalized citizen on a presidential ballot ever. Now, I've heard the argument made from other people who are naturalized US citizens born outside the United States, whether it's the Ted Cruz campaign or supporters of Arnold Schwarzenegger or Jennifer Granholm when they were hoping that somehow they would get in the race that the Constitution, yes, was originally written. You have to be 35 born in the United States or a naturalized citizen at the time of the writing. But there's this argument that the 14th Amendment, the due process clause, could in fact amend that or a court could look at the 14th Amendment and say, no, wait a second, maybe the 14th Amendment gives somebody who's a naturalized citizen the same rights and privileges as somebody who was born in the United States. Is that sort of where you're going here? Yes, so the 14th Amendment says that anyone born or naturalized has due process and equal protection of the laws. They did not put an asterisk in the amendment saying, except for naturalized citizens in the case of the presidential race. No, it was an amendment that amended the earlier discriminatory parts of the Constitution. So in the original Constitution, it says that uh, that African Americans are three fifths of a person. That was obviously amended out of the Constitution, even though you could open up the Constitution and see it in the original Constitution, it doesn't mean that it applies. The 14th Amendment, we will argue, has done the same thing for the clause saying that naturalized citizens are basically second class citizens and cannot run for President of the United States. We believe that has already been amended out and it couldn't be any clearer than the 14th Amendment saying born or naturalized. So now there's many other cases that we're gonna cite, including the FEC case saying that there's no question that we should be able to run for the office and and, and we believe that New Hampshire should get their say. And so that's why we're encouraging people to come out, not only, and if you can bring signs that says let them run, but, but more importantly in New Hampshire, the signs that say let us vote. Because New Hampshire is an important voice here and, and they could use that voice to actually affect this issue. So if I'm on the ballot, Joe Biden is not running in New Hampshire because of a, of a disagreement that he had with New Hampshire and the DNC. So he's going to be running in South Carolina, but not in New Hampshire. I could actually win that state. And, and not only could it, I believe I can win all the states obviously, but that one is particularly very realistic. And you should let the, the voters of New Hampshire weigh in on that. 
And so that's why I'm inviting all press, all supporters to come there. And and obviously you could find out more at jankforamerica.com and facebook.com slash jankuger official, where we'll be giving more campaign updates. But it's at the State Archives Building, non-ratification way, Concord, New Hampshire. 9:15 a.m. on Thursday is when we're gathering, and I wanted everybody to make sure that they knew that they know in case they support it. I want to let the control room know that I'm aware that I'm having a technical issue with the camera here, and that's why you're not seeing streaming video. And I'll try to get that fixed. But Jank, you announced when you announced a few weeks ago that you were running. You said you were running as a proxy, a proxy for any other candidate. There is another candidate, another Democrat in the race, Minnesota House Member Dean Phillips. Uh, he has also said that Joe Biden cannot beat Donald Trump and that therefore there has to be another Democrat. He has also said his primary issue is campaign finance reform. So does he qualify as that other Democrat? And if not, why not? So it's a good question. First of all, Dean Phillips and I um, disagree on many different issues. He's more of an establishment Democrat. Obviously, I'm a progressive Democrat. Uh, and so while he says he's for campaign finance reform, I would love for him to uh, have the position of banning corporate PAC money and not taking corporate PAC money. And by the way, I'd like to clarify something I said on a couple of interviews, including here on the Young Turks. While I'm, uh, since uh, the DNC has not banned super PAC money in primaries, uh, I'm open to that. I don't think that any year is going to come, but it, but I'm not going to unilaterally disarm. But I will not take any corporate PAC money. No way, right? So I would encourage Representative Phillips to do likewise, not only in his campaign. But also when he's in the House, because he's a representative. But I like that Dean Phillips got in the race. So, like the traditional politicians say, me, 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 right? I'm not saying that at all. I love that Dean Phillips got in the race. I want more people to get in the race. And I want us to have a super strong primary. And I want the Democratic voters to decide. And if they like me best among all those choices, wonderful. If they like Dean Phillips more, great. But why, why am I and Dean Phillips and Marianne Williamson not sufficient as, as Part of the point of your question, I think, David, and and so look, if they allowed for a debate and we had a real primary, then then we are perfectly sufficient, right? But since the DNC is saying we are we're going to shut out everyone else, and this is not a real democracy as long as the DNC runs it, uh, what we're uh, what we're going to do is end all debates and all discussion about this, etc. We need, much more importantly, we need Joe Biden to drop out. I mean, he, he's being intensely selfish. Uh, two thirds of Americans do not want him to run. Two thirds of Democrats don't want him to run. He's 80 years old, he's at 37% on the polling. So I think what Dean and I are saying is similar in that get everybody in this race. This is not fair to Democratic voters that the DNC and the Democratic Party is saying, no, we're gonna pick an incredibly weak candidate who's polling at 37% when we think democracy is on the line. And no one is allowed to contest that. So we disagree. I hope Governor Newsom, Governor Whitmer, Governor Bashir, Governor Shapiro, Governor Pritzker, that they all come in. And I would love to do a debate with all of them. So let's have the strongest possible primary to have the strongest possible candidate. When you were asked about Marianne Williamson a couple weeks ago, you said, well, she has not broken through. And therefore, that was another reason for you to get in. Is that the threshold? And at what point do you determine whether you or whether you know Dean has, has broken through or anybody else, any other Democrat? At what point do you say, okay, now we need to coalesce in order to defeat the Democratic establishment candidate, President Biden? Yeah, I think that's easy. So um, it logically, as soon as we have the primaries, that you'll sort that out. So let's take a hypothetical. Let's say that Governor Josh Shapiro, Biden drops out, or Biden stays in and Governor Josh Shapiro comes in anyway. Uh, he's the governor of Pennsylvania, beat a Trump acolyte by 15 points easily, easily. He would nearly guarantee the state of Pennsylvania, which is one of the swing states that Joe Biden is losing. Joe Biden is losing five out of seven st swing states. The point here, guys, is to beat Donald Trump. And we should not defer to authority and go, oh, well, our dear leader, even though he's polling terribly and is almost guaranteed a loss, we have to bow our heads to him and do whatever he says. No, I, I think I'm the right candidate. Uh, jankforamerica.com. But if it turns out, David, that we have a primary race and Governor Shapiro wins easily in Iowa, New Hampshire, South Carolina, and he's sitting at 55% and I'm sitting at 
of course I'm not going to continue to go on. And then I'm happy to unite behind whichever Democrat is opposed to Donald Trump because the whole point is to beat Donald Trump. And I don't want to go into a fight with Donald Trump with a wounded antelope who refuses to campaign, who refuses to make arguments for him, running against him. I've made better arguments in favor of Joe Biden than he has. So for example, he's down 19 points on jobs. He doubled the number of jobs Donald Trump created. What is wrong with you, Joe Biden? If you're gonna be an egomaniac and say, me, 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 my legacy matters more. I have to be a two-term president because two-term presidents get better legacies. Well, then God damn it, run and make a case against Donald Trump. Why are you losing by 19 points to Donald Trump on an issue where you doubled him? I have told more Americans now that Joe Biden has doubled the number of jobs that Trump created than Joe Biden has, and by a lot. If you're gonna take a nap, go home and take a nap. But if you're gonna run for president, then run. But he's not doing either. He's condemning all of us Democrats and honestly, the entire country and entire democracy. And he's saying, I don't care if we lose democracy, as long as I have a shot at two terms. My ego is the most important thing in the world. I don't agree. And, and David, you asked a good question. Why me? Why not just Dean Phillips? Why not just Marianne Williamson? Does it look like Dean Phillips makes this kind of case? Dean Phillips politely goes in and goes, well, I love Joe Biden. And I think he was right about everything, but golly gee, he's, I, I wish he'd get out of the race. No, no, you gotta push him out of the race. Sorry, brother, the incumbents under 50% don't win. Incumbents under 40%. They literally never win, never, and he's at 37%. I'm not gonna sit here and lose to Donald Trump because we, everybody in Washington wants to kiss up to Joe Biden. Is it possible that that's what's going on though, that this isn't about Joe Biden's ego per se, but rather that just the inner circle around him have been telling him, look, you don't worry about the polls, everything's fine. You got the Democratic establishment behind you. There's no way that Donald Trump, given all he's going through is gonna beat you. And that for him, it's not so much about ego, he's just making a political calculation, which again, it's not as nefarious as suggesting that Joe Biden's ego is gonna rule in the country. But is it possible it's something a little bit more innocent involving President Biden? No, uh, so uh, I, I think that, that Joe Biden has been an egomaniac his whole life. Uh, everyone who talks to him will tell you, you can't get in a word edgewise because the guy loves the sound of his own voice. He doesn't let anybody else talk, it's all me, me, me. Why, why would you, he said he was gonna be a transition president. Why would you run again when you're 80? Everyone on planet Earth can see you're having cognitive difficulties. You're pulling at 37%, you're losing five out of seven swing states. You're losing to 10 points with independence. You're down 15 points from when you barely beat Trump last time. Now, I, look, if someone's got a better answer, I, well, corruption, I, I don't, I, David, I'm not even sure like what the, like, I think there are good people around him who are probably encouraging him to do the right thing. And by the way, the great news for Joe Biden is if he retires now, he retires an American hero. He beat Donald Trump, he created over 14 million jobs, good steward of the economy, and bows out gracefully. Then all the history books write Joe Biden as a hero. If he loses the country on his watch, he becomes one of the primary villains of American history. He's not a normal candidate. If Josh Shapiro or, or Gavin Newsom loses, well, hey, the Democrats chose the best candidate they thought had the best chance, and they and they lost in a normal race, and they at least started above Trump. Every one of those governors would stop start the race significantly above Trump instead of below Trump, right? But if Biden loses to Trump, history's gonna look back and go, why did you run when you were at 37%? Why did you run where every sane political analyst thought you were gonna lose? And you said democracy was on the line and you played dice with democracy because you wanted a second term. So, you know, D David, I know you're asking me questions. I don't know what your opinion is, but I don't see any other reason why Joe Biden is in this race other than his gigantic, ridiculous ego, which is endangering the entire country. It's also an ego, of course, that's not just for Joe Biden, though. I would argue it's also the Democratic National Committee. And in fact, the reaction to Dean Phillips getting the race, Minnesota's own governor, Tim Waltz, who's a Democrat, who's a friend of Dean Phillips, he reacted, he sort of bristled at the notion that the Dean Phillips would get. And he said, we're gonna have our nominee in President Biden and that will get done. That immediate dismissiveness from the DNC, what do you make of it? And have you heard anything directly yourself 
himself from the DNC or from people close to President Biden. Yeah, no, uh, yeah. President Biden's team has bought a couple of websites uh, that are a variation of my website. So uh, it's obvious that they've noticed and they're a little worried, good. The correct website is jenkforamerica.com and I probably got under their skin by buying bidenisgoingtolose.com and it redirects to uh, my campaign website, so they did likewise. But with Dean Phillips, they've launched all the ships. And because in their Washington minds, they're like outsiders, like Americans would want populist progressives like John Fetterman. Oops. Um, oh, There's no way an outsider is gonna win. I mean, they're not even corrupt. They won't even take corporate back money. So they view me as a smaller threat, I'm being honest about it. But when Dean Phillips got in, they're like, "Oh, he's a congressperson. That is an important, privileged person." Okay, so he he since he's a human being and he counts, uh, we're going to attack him with all we got. So every mainstream media article has has attack quotes against Dean Phillips from Democrats. So this is the standard smear job that the DNC does to any Democrat that isn't picked by a dear leader. The Democratic Party is not supposed to be the authoritarian party, that's supposed to be the Republican Party. But the DNC has turned it into totally authoritarian. Everyone must bow their head to the weak leader who is almost definitely going to lose. Otherwise, you'll be smeared to no end. So everyone is out there smearing Dean Phillips. Oh, He shouldn't run. Uh, Molly Jong Fest, who I like otherwise, said that he was a privileged white guy. What do you think Joe Biden is? It doesn't get any more privilege than no one should be allowed to run against me. I am the king. I mean, president. <laughs> DNC, tell him I'm king, right? Phillips may be a little bit privileged because he uh, he married into a uh, distillery family and is worth something like seventy million dollars. I mean, he's sitting on a lot of money, so maybe he's privileged in that regard. Uh, but in terms of money, Phillips has said that he's going to plow in at least two million dollars of his own money to be competitive in New Hampshire. How much money, Jenk, have you raised? What's your target for the final quarter here of the year? Yeah, so I'm not independently wealthy. It's a super fair question, jenkforamerica.com. So we've raised in the six digits, so we're good at raising money. You know why? Because people actually want somebody to fight for them. So everybody knows that if I, look, we know that it's a long shot, right? And everybody who donates knows it's a long shot. But we also know that if I become president, there's nothing in the world that's gonna stop me from passing all the policy positions on my website. Paid family leave, public option, $15 minimum wage, negotiating drug prices. And by the way, many other policies that are not on there, Medicare for all, ending the endless wars, etc. I'm a progressive who's gonna fight for you, but not just for progressives, but for Democrats, all Democratic voters, and for all Americans as well. So. That's so. Yes, Dean Phillips is going to outraise me. You're you're not wrong to challenge me on that. And 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 Joe Biden will have hundreds of millions of dollars more than me. But I'm going to have the loudest voice, and I'm going to fight the hardest for the American people and for Democratic voters. And so, and by the way, I'm going to fight for 25 million naturalized citizens who are tired of being treated as second class citizens. That's why we're going to New Hampshire. That's why we want you to come with us to New Hampshire, 9.15 AM at the Ballot Law Commission. And we're gonna get a hearing on this. We're finally gonna get a hearing on this. And we're gonna fight for those 25 million naturalized citizens. Enough, we are American, we are 100% American. Stop treating us like we're not, especially because the Constitution has already been amended. And so, yes, I will not have anywhere near the money Joe Biden has. But I've got, it's the size of the fight in the dog that matters. And I got a lot of fight in me. I'm gonna ask you about New Hampshire a little bit more in just a second, but I wanna ask you in terms of some of these progressive issues, whether it's raising the minimum wage, taxing the rich, free college, Medicare for all, taking care of the undocumented migrants who have crossed in this country. A lot of this Bernie Sanders supported. And when Bernie Sanders was asked, how are you gonna get it done four years ago? He said, well, I'm gonna have to sell the American people on this. I'm gonna have to go around and explain to the American people and use the bully pulpit of the presidency to sell this so that I can put pressure on Congress. Does that have much of an appetite for you? I mean, the idea that you would have to go, you've been dealing with these issues for so long. You know the polling is already there for you. The idea that you're gonna have to essentially be the salesman in chief to a lot of people who are skeptical. Why does that have any appeal? Oh, Are you kidding me? I love that. So 
go ahead, get in my way if you're a standard corporate politician when I fight for paid family leave. That's 12 weeks of moms and dads taking time off when they have a baby to take care of their baby instead of going right back to an assembly line or a coal mine. Go ahead, Joe Manchin, get in my way, see how it turns out for you. Go ahead, corporate Democrats, get in my way, see how it turns out for you. 84% of Americans, go ahead, corporate Republicans, get in my way because of your corporate donors. 74% of Republicans want paid family leave. They actually care about moms, they actually care about kids. So, like, look, I can be honest with you. I think Bernie was terrific on policy, and I think he was an amazing leader for progressives, and he has a heart of gold. But that's part of his problem. He's too nice. He refuses to fight Democratic colleagues. And in two elections back to back, he refused to fight Hillary Clinton, then he refused to fight Joe Biden. Does it look like I'm refusing to fight Joe Biden or fight corporate Democrats or fight anyone in my path? I will embarrass and humiliate anyone who's against paid family leave. I will drive down their poll numbers mercilessly until they're driven out of politics. I will help finance primaries against them. I'll go to their states, I'll go to their districts and make sure that they lose. Politics is both carrots and sticks. You need hardball to win. But Democrats have gotten lazy and comfortable and corrupt. The Democratic leadership has. Their voters are amazing and they let down their voters every time because they never fight for them. Imagine a Democrat fighting for you. I know it seems unimaginable, but does it look like I'm gonna have a problem with it? I can't wait to do that for you guys. And I guarantee you that everything on my website, we pass it because they're all incredibly popular. And I will take those that popular positions and I will make the other side whether they're corporate Democrats or the entirety of the Republican Party, admit that they are against the American people. Say it, have the fight so we can have clarity. Whereas Joe Biden takes the public option, doesn't even propose it. He doesn't propose it because he doesn't want it to pass. He was lying about it the whole time. There's a, all the difference in the world. The minute I get past the nationalized citizen issue, and if I win in the Supreme Court, we win at this ballot law commission and we get our name in New Hampshire, I'm gonna win New Hampshire. I'm gonna win New Hampshire and we're gonna shock this world. And the minute that we win that and we win the Supreme Court case, nothing's gonna stop us. We're gonna be a runaway freight train. And so good luck establishment, good luck. In terms of the ballot commission, what is the victory? Is it you gotta get on the ballot? I mean, and, and how quickly could they make that decision? And is anything less than that, wouldn't that be a defeat? Okay, so I, I'm I'm not a standard politician, I, I'm honest. So if we lose, is it a defeat in that case? Well, of course, we lost, right? So we want our name on the ballot, we have an excellent case. You guys are gonna get to see that case with your own eyes. If you show up there, it's at the State Archives building. We're meeting at 9.15 a.m., bring signs if you can. If you're a New, New Hampshire voter, tell them, let us vote, let us vote. Let us have a voice here. That's exactly what New Hampshire is about. Um, but if we win, that means my name goes on the ballot. And there's an excellent reason why we should win at this level. It doesn't mean that the issue is resolved, David. Another good question, another fair question. It, it still has to go to the courts. There's no way to resolve this without going all the way to the Supreme Court. So we're gonna do that and we have an excellent case. But we have to win at the ballot law commission to get on the ballot. So that's what we're gonna try to do on Thursday. Now, there's also an argument that New Hampshire, and we've heard this from the Democrats and the Democratic establishment, that it doesn't matter how you do or how Dean Phillips does in New Hampshire, because New Hampshire has essentially changed the calendar. The Biden administration, the look, the Democratic National Committee run by Joe Biden, they have determined that South Carolina goes first, and that if New Hampshire leapfrogs ahead of them, as South as New Hampshire will do, then Biden's not participating. So at the moment, Joe Biden's not participating in New Hampshire, although there's something of an effort to try to have right in for Joe. Biden, but the point that Biden and his, and his supporters are making is that therefore New Hampshire doesn't matter, that ignore Dean Phillips, Cenk Uger, Marion Williamson or anybody else who gets in because Biden is not competing in New Hampshire. What do you say to that? Look, it's there's a lot of deep problems with it. But first of all, you think I'm gonna listen to DNC rules when the DNC sets up all of its rules to protect the authoritarian leader? and has protected corporate establishment corrupt politicians my whole life and has set every rule against progressives and I'm supposed to care who they think is gonna go first. No, I'm going to New Hampshire and I'm gonna win New Hampshire. I love New Hampshire and if Joe Biden doesn't love New Hampshire, Joe Biden wants to betray New Hampshire, that's his business. Good, don't run in New Hampshire, we don't want you, okay? 
and let New Hampshire pick someone who's gonna fight for them. So no, I have no regard for the DNC rules, none when it comes to trying to betray New Hampshire and make sure that they're not the first primary state. So look, you find all the details because on the Young Turks, I unless I'm a guest in very rare situations like this, I can't tell you anything about my campaign. So follow the campaign at jankforamerica.com, facebook.com slash jankugerofficial, where we'll give more videos, campaign updates all the time. Facebook.com slash jankugerofficial, jankforamerica.com, and at Twitter and at Instagram at, at jankuger. We'll give you campaign updates there. We'll tell you how to exact address of the state archives building, etc. cetera. But no, I'm going to New Hampshire. I'm gonna compete in New Hampshire, and if they put me on the ballot, I'm gonna win New Hampshire. Junk, the DNC and Democrats threw everything, including the kitchen sink at you when you were in for Congress a couple of years ago. They dredged up some remarks from more than 30 years ago when you were a college student and a Republican. Um, how do you view some of those remarks now, and is any of this fair game? Yeah. So this is the smear jobs that uh, corporate Democrats do, and unfortunately, a lot of times they're, uh, you know, willing. Uh, accomplices in mainstream media. So, and by the way, it's funny because mainstream media all of a sudden started quoting the alt right, the most radical people in the right wing. So they're like, oh, did you know that Jenks said something in the 1990s? Oh, okay, so basically you had to go back 30 years to find something that I said that, that, that was gonna offend people, right? So, yes, that was a different person back then. I was trying to be a Republican, etc. So some of the comments I've apologized for, but I want to be super clear. A lot of the comments are totally taken out of context. They're, they're jokes that mainstream media lied about and pretended were not jokes. They didn't even explain that they were jokes. And so, and then they, they called me anti Muslim when I, my background is Muslim. They said that I brought on David Duke to share his anti Semitic views when I called him an anti Semite, a bigot, a racist. So, mainstream media, if they view you as a threat, will. Seek and destroy. That's what they're doing to Dean Phillips right now. But Dean can be polite all he likes. I'm not Dean. I, I'm I'm an outsider, and I'm proud to be an outsider. And now as an outsider, they want to block me and say, "Oh, you're not American enough to go on a ballot." Well, I think New Hampshire is going to disagree, and I think we're going to change the country. We're going to change the world. So uh, I'm going to New Hampshire. We're going to win it. Jankforamerica.com. John, finally, um, regarding the ballot law commission, how quickly do you expect a decision? Um, and also, New Hampshire is known for you know the people there love to kick the tires of every presidential candidate and have you do town halls and answer endless questions. At what point do you start doing that? Do you do that before the ballot law commission makes a decision? Do you wait? Uh, take us through this. Everybody knows I'm happy to take uh, any and all questions, and so. Uh, I get tough questions here. I get tough questions in other places. I actually get the toughest questions here. But, <laughs> but, uh, it, it, but from citizens, come on. I'm not like regular politicians. Come on, I don't mind answering. You got a crazy question that doesn't make any sense. So what? I'll tell you, it's a crazy question that doesn't make any sense. You got something that uh, you heard somewhere that smears me. Let me clear the air. I don't care. But most importantly, I'll answer your policy questions, and I'll tell you how I'm going to get bills passed. That it's not just. We're not gonna play patty cakes anymore. If the Democratic voters want something, I'm gonna fight like hell for it. So will I take questions in New Hampshire? Of course, of course. Wherever I go, New Hampshire, Iowa, South Carolina, Nevada, anywhere. Come and uh, come and find out, come and do to my rallies, come to New Hampshire to do the ballot law commission. Come anywhere uh, where I'm campaigning and I'd be super happy to meet with any voters and answer any questions they have. A big uh, hearing coming up this Thursday at the New Hampshire Ballot Law Commission. Uh, Jenka, uh, thanks for doing this. And for uh, again, Jenka and, and, and his campaign and TYT had said any question is fair game. There was no restriction on anything I could ask. Uh, Jenk, thanks for, for doing this. We appreciate it. And uh, to everybody out there who is watching and listening, you heard it. We will stay on top of the news coming out of New Hampshire, whether it involves Jenk Uger or any other presidential candidate. Thanks for joining this special edition of TYT. I'm David Schuster. Thanks for listening to the full episode of The Young Turks. Support our work, listen ad free, access members only bonus content and more by subscribing to Apple Podcasts at apple.co slash TYT. I'm your host, Cenk Uger, and I'll see you soon.